definitely if you are coming to Wisconsin you definitely need to come and uh, try the fish boil it is a Wisconsinite uh, dish all of the fish is coming from Lake Michigan and Green Bay Wisconsin sweet water very traditional I highly recommend that you give it a shot everything is boiled very traditional este tipo de platillo por acá en Wisconsin es muy popular se llama fish boil que viene siendo algo así como pescado hervido los pescados obviamente vienen aquí de el lago de Michigan y es puro pescado de agua dulce y cada año me gusta venir aquí porque es tradición es tradición recomendable 100% Place. Look at those onions, they're almost ready, guys. All right, here is our fish. If you'd like to uh, come on over and take a look at them. Okay. I put them in the kettle. <laughs> These are all Lake Michigan whitefish, and you can come all the way around over here if you like. Lots of room over here. Can we pick them out now? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Aubrey? And right here in Northern Door County, we actually have five major fishing companies. Uh, each of them are going out daily. Uh, these here are considered the number ones. They're going to be 12 to 17 inches in length. Uh, they'll weigh about two and a half pounds right in there. Uh, the whitefish will get up to about 15 pounds. They get pretty big. But these make the best for boiling. Nice and firm. Awesome. <clears throat> so <clears throat> those five companies, three of them are up at the tip of the peninsula up in Gills Rock. And then there's two other ones over in Bailey's Harbor directly across the, the uh, peninsula. <laughs> and of course, they do get other types of fish in their nets, which they have to throw back. Uh, the only ones they can keep right now would be uh, the whitefish, catfish, and eel pouts. And eel pouts are also called lawyers. <laughs> so what we did start with in the kettle was the baby red potatoes. Uh, you can see those sweet boiling onions floating on top. Uh, with that, we have 35 gallons of water and over 10 pounds of salt. 10 pounds? 10 pounds. And that salt helps to firm up the fish. It will soak into the potatoes because we have the ends cut off them. And it also raises the boiling temperature. Oh. Uh, as for the slabs of wood around the kettle, that holds the heat in. So when I am uh, maneuvering them around, that's how we control and regulate it. We do work with a lot of maple and oak for our main firewood these slabs I get from the local sawmill. They do a lot of custom cutting, so it's always a wide variety. If you do have any questions throughout the whole cooking process, feel free to shout them on out. <laughs> Otherwise it gets kind of quiet out here. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Matthew. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> we actually added sweet corn this year. We're trying to see how it works out for us. So far, oh. it's been pretty good. Let's try to, try to keep that quality up. That's awesome. If you haven't been here before, uh, past years, we always start serving at 5 o'clock. And I'm used to doing a boil every 30 minutes. Now we kind of staggered it to an hour and 15.
I'll have some time to get everybody up, clean everything off good. We have to do our part. <laughs> Salt. <laughs> <laughs> that should come right back to a boil. And once it does, uh, if you come up here and look on the surface, you're going to start noticing a real heavy gray film developing. That's going to be all the oils rising from the fish. Oh. So at the end okay. of the cooking process, we want to remove that oil. To do so, we simply boil it over. We do that with two cups of fuel oil right into the fire. In uh, 1984, and uh, I had the opportunity and privilege to take over this restaurant from the original owner, Charlie Pelletier, and this, is, this will be my 19th season here. Wow. So now I'm just in a little friendly competition with my father. <laughs> he's still at the Viking. <laughs> and the Viking is actually the first restaurant to commercialize the fish boils. And the owner at the time, Lawrence Wickman, um, he started the, the Viking in the early 30s. And he, then he started doing the fish boils in the 50s. So what is... Here in 1970. Okay. And so what is this? Yeah. What is this recipe coming from? Uh, it actually was the Scandinavian settlers. The Scandinavian. Okay. So that goes back Yay. well over 150 <laughs> years. Great way to feed a large group, and back then with all the big logging communities, this is what they were preparing. Now we're just cooling it down a little bit. how heavy that gray film gets on the sides. What's your biggest disaster during this? Uh, like the wind switched it? one time and it went that direction. And I had a gal run through the entire dining room thinking her hair was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't happy with me. <laughs> That's the one that comes to my mind quickest. <laughs> but other than that, nothing really crazy has happened out here. It just gets a little tricky when it's swirling winds. And normally the wind will just either go uh, east or west. Okay. I'm sorry? Um, I don't quite throw as much fuel on the fire, but we continue right on. Rain, snow. The steak is on your plate. Put your finger right on the bone and then just peel the skin away from the meat. And then with your fork, just rake the meat right off the bone. If the bones are curved upward, flip the piece over. On the tail pieces, there's one bone right down the middle. Yeah, no kidding. It started to boil. Let's get the camera out. All right, one minute until the boil over. Whee! Like the bell. <laughs> you always have to have a dinner bell. <laughs> you might just want to take a couple steps back. Huh? 
This is our final product, and we asked our order to go, so they gave us a little bit of coleslaw on the side, a little bit of butter, which is very Wisconsinite too, lots of milk and butter here, and this is our fish. <laughs> Sure, you can do a little bit of pepper on mine. Sure, go ahead. A lot of butter, butter. Okay, thank you. 